Hey, this is Scott, and today we're going to talk about how to get better results from your camera's autofocus system. If this is your first time to this channel, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe if you want to see more in the future. So today I'm actually going to be running this process called autofocus micro adjustment on my lens here, and I wanted to run through the whole process with you and talk about it a little bit more in detail. If you want to skip ahead to any particular part of this video, be sure to check the description down below. I'll put a timeline down there of all the critical points in this video. So first up, let's just get a little bit of background on what this is and why you need it. Today we're talking about DSLRs, not mirrorless cameras. DSLRs will have actually two autofocus systems in them. One that is active when you're using the viewfinder and the other that's active when you're using live view. Because of this, you may have noticed a difference in speed or something when you're using the two different kinds of autofocus. The autofocus on the live view side is using the same image sensor that actually takes your picture, so if that sensor says your image is in focus and then takes the picture, the results will be exactly what you should expect. When you're using the viewfinder, however, there's actually a second sensor in the bottom of your camera which is dedicated to determining the autofocus and communicating that with your lens and your body, and then when you take the picture, the image is captured on your main sensor. Because of this two sensor system, if there's any slight misalignment between those two sensors, then what your camera thinks is in focus may not actually appear in focus when you take the final image. This is not the sign of a bad camera or a bad lens because any very slight misalignment here could really be noticeable, especially when you're using wider aperture lenses with a shallow depth of field. There's a certain tolerance of what's acceptable to leave the factory and the same goes for your lens, so that's why this autofocus micro adjustment system exists in your DSLR. The purpose is to correct that slight misalignment and to get the best results possible out of your camera and lens combination. Because this misalignment exists not only in the lens but also in your body, the same lens might perform differently on different bodies. So if the lens performs great on one of your bodies but you have another body that it doesn't perform so well on, or if it performs great on your friend's camera but not on yours, that's probably the reason why. Also keep in mind that this process probably won't be as necessary with wide angle lenses or lenses that start from smaller apertures like f5.6. The depth of field in these lenses will probably be deep enough to cover any slight misalignment in autofocus and you most likely won't notice it in most cases. Telephoto lenses or lenses with wider apertures like 1.8, 1.4, or 1.2 though, it'll be much more easy to notice when your autofocus is very slightly off because that depth of field is so shallow. There are different ways of doing this, which can range from completely manual to semi-automatic techniques. Recently, companies like Sigma and Tamron have also released USB docks that you can connect directly to their lens to do this kind of same process, only it's based in the lens, not in your camera body. This process has some benefits and also has some drawbacks. One of the benefits of this system is, for example, if you have a zoom lens, you can make adjustments at different focal lengths, and you can also make those adjustments at different distances, so if your lens is focusing differently when you're focusing on close objects than when you're focusing on far objects, you can make adjustments according to that. Another benefit is if you have a cheaper or lower end body that does not have the autofocus micro adjustment available, you can still do this with the lens directly. One of the downsides of this is that it's a manual process. You have to take the photos and make judgments for yourself and dial in the adjustments and it can take some time. You can definitely get great results, but it's not as simple as some of the automatic processes. Another downside is that you're dialing in this adjustment to the lens directly, so if you have multiple bodies and it performs differently on those different bodies, the lens won't know which body it's attached to, so you can only make that adjustment for one of those bodies, and then you're going to have to use the body's autofocus micro adjustment to compensate for that on the other, but it's probably not going to be as accurate as it could be if you're only using it on one body. Other manual techniques for dialing in your camera body's autofocus micro adjustment could range from using no paid tools or products at all, all the way to paying for something that will help you to get this in a more controlled environment. The technique I'm going to run through with you today is actually one of the semi-automatic modes, but before we get into that, let's just go over some of the basics of how to tell if you need to do this, and also some of the things you want to keep in mind no matter what technique you're using. So as I mentioned before, using your camera's live view will use the same sensor to determine autofocus as it will to capture the image, so barring any external factors that affect your focus, this should always be completely accurate. Because of that, if you take a photo with live view and then another with your viewfinder and compare them, you should be able to tell if using your viewfinder is getting you the best autofocus results that you could possibly get. Of course, you want to do this in as controlled of an environment as you can. This means having an easy to focus on subject 
making sure your camera is stable and somewhere where it doesn't move, the framing, the distance, and everything is consistent between your two photos, making sure you're using the center autofocus point because this is typically the most accurate, and also repeat this test a few times to make sure that no external factors are affecting your results. So now that you've determined you want to go ahead and do some autofocus micro adjustments, how should you go about it? As I mentioned, I'm going to be going through a semi-automatic technique to calibrate my lens today, but the methods that I mentioned to test if you need autofocus micro adjustment also apply to actually doing the autofocus micro adjustment. This means you want to focus on something flat, so that way there's no confusion of which area to focus on with your autofocus system, and also something that has enough detail for your camera to grab onto. For example, the technique I will use today will use this target, which you can get from that program. There are some techniques to determine a recommended distance from the target that you should be testing this at, but I think that if it's a lens you're often using at a similar distance or within a similar range of distances, like might be the case if you're shooting portraits or something like that, then you should test it at that distance to make sure you get the best results when you're actually using it in real life. Also remember that since you're using this on a tripod hopefully or somewhere stable, you want to turn off all your lens stabilization so that way that doesn't affect your image. And also you want to use mirror lockup and some kind of remote release if that's possible. If not, you could also use the self timer, just anything to avoid any kind of external factors that would affect your image whatsoever. You're gonna to wanna to take a base shot using live view like I mentioned to get the kind of target for the optimum amount of sharpness that you're aiming for. After this, it's kind of a trial and error process where you're gonna take some shots using your viewfinder, of course, and then you're gonna compare it to your prime optimum sharpness shot and try and determine if your focus is falling behind or in front of your subject. After that, you can dial in either positive or negative autofocus micro adjustments to either push that point away from your camera or back towards your camera, depending on where your focus falls. How much you're gonna dial in, again, is a little bit trial and error. You can start with a small adjustment, maybe three or four, and see how it affects your image, and then go from there. On zoom lenses, with Canon at least, you're going to have two options where you can do this for the tele end and also the wide end of your lens. The reason that I chose this semi-automatic technique is because I personally don't trust myself and I want to take my own judgment out of the equation as much as possible. So I actually haven't mentioned it yet, but the software that I'm going to be using today is called Focal. Uh, and there's actually two options for paid versions and they just have a different number of features, but both of them would be fine, and they're also a reasonable price for the peace of mind that I got personally from using that instead of judging myself to make these adjustments. So to use this software, you're gonna plug your camera into your computer using the USB cable, and then open the software. With the 5D Mark IV, you actually have to open the Photos app in Mac OS before you can connect. I don't know why, it's just a weird thing, but open that up first and you'll be able to connect to the program. Click connect and you'll see your camera there, and then you can use the program to determine if your target is properly aligned. Through this process, you'll get a few prompts and reminders from the program to make sure that things like your mirror lockup is turned on, which means that if you have anti-flicker, you have to turn that off first. To make sure that your eyepiece is covered, you can use gaffer's tape or something to cover that up if you want. And also to make sure that your uh, lens's IS is turned off. You also want to make sure that you are in one shot single point autofocus using the center autofocus point as I mentioned before and that you're shooting an aperture priority. Of course make sure that you're opened up to the widest aperture your lens has just to make sure that you're getting that maximum amount of control over where your focus point lands. This is a pretty straightforward process and once you've determined that your target is properly aligned you can go ahead and start the process to calibrate your lens. At least with Canon cameras, the program is not able to actually change your autofocus micro adjustment settings, so it will prompt you to change them and then you go ahead and do that manually. The program typically tests at a few different settings like minus 20, minus 10, 0, 10, and 20, and then it will go back and hone in on the best possible results. Throughout the process, it will actually graph your results down below for you so you can see actually very clearly how your lens is performing and you can get an idea for where it's heading in terms of autofocus micro adjustment. It will also tell you the accuracy of your results, so you can really be confident that you're getting the best possible results through this process. At the end of this process, you'll either get one of two messages. It will tell you that this is the best autofocus micro adjustment setting, set it on your camera and you are finished. Or sometimes it will ask if you want to test a few more points along the way. And if it gives me that option, I usually do just to be sure. After it's all set and done, your autofocus micro adjustment is now set. It will give you the option to save these results so you can have them for future reference. You could even print them out and bring them with you. That way if something happens and you need to reset your camera, you know what settings you had for each particular lens and you don't have to go through the whole process again. Remember you want to repeat this for all of your lens and body combinations and also keep in mind that this is not a sign of a bad lens or a bad camera unless your results are way out of the range of what autofocus micro adjustment can compensate for. Also while I did use Focal here you can absolutely get great results from any of the other manual techniques 
For me personally, just I trust this a lot more and it makes me feel a lot more at ease that I'm getting the absolute best performance out of each of my lenses and body combinations. You may also want to recalibrate every so often, which is actually what I'm doing now. And if you send your lens or your body in for repair or any kind of adjustment or cleaning, you're probably going to want to also recalibrate it after that process. If you're interested in trying Focal, I will also put a link down in the description below, so be sure to check that out. And if you have any other questions related to Focal or related to autofocus micro adjustment, be sure to leave it below and I will definitely get back to you. If you liked this video or found it helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future, and as always, thank you for watching.